Last year I cut apart Carhartt's mock toe boot and at the end of that video I, I just walked away thinking that it was a really cheap boot posing as a heritage style work boot and that Carhartt was using their good workwear name to sell a boot that was far from work ready. And I just, I don't think it's fair to fully judge an, an entire boot line of a company off of a single boot. So today we're gonna cut apart their most popular work boot to see if Carhartt can redeem themselves or if they should still be embarrassed of their boot line. There's been a lot of Carhartt drama the last couple weeks because Carhartt mandated all their employees to get vaccinated. And so people all over social media have been ripping off Carhartt logos, burning their coats, burning their overalls, making videos about how they're never gonna wear Carhartt again. So I thought it was a good time to make a Carhartt video to try to capitalize on some of the search traffic, but also to add some more context to this whole Carhartt drama. So that's why we're doing this video and work seasons right around the corner. And we'll also be comparing it to a few other more modern style work boots with like the Ariats, the Keens, Blundstones, even though they're not a work boot, I think it'll give us some good context. And obviously the Mocktail. So now let's go over the boot information. So the brand is Carhartt. The style is the Rugged Flex six inch composite toe work boot. The color is dark brown and oil tanned. They weigh two pounds each and they are made in China. Now let's go over the information we can gather about this boot before we cut it in half, starting with the leather. So this is an oil tanned leather, which means it's a chrome tanned leather with tons of oils infused into it. It almost feels wet. There's, it's such a supple and uh, saturated leather. It's almost the exact same leather as the mock toe boot, where they've sanded off that top layer of the grain to remove any imperfections to make it a more even colored and textured leather. And then they emboss this fake leather print or the texture in the top of it. It's pretty common for brands to do that because they make so many boots and leather can vary so much that they want a really even and consistent leather so that when people buy the boots, they match the photos as close as possible because people get really upset about when the photos don't match perfectly to the product they got. Trust me, I have a leather working business. It, some, it's like some people forget sometimes that leather comes from live animals. So I understand where they're coming from to make it a really even and consistent leather, but I personally would just rather deal with the flaws and the the characteristics of a more full grain leather without sanding it and having a fake print in, put in top. And they also have these rubber bumpers on the toe and the heel and they say it's for stability and protection. And I'm not really sure if it's an extra layer on top. It looks like it is, because it's got a little bit of a lip. So I hope it's two layers that leather falls all the way through and a rubber layer on top, because it's nice to have that extra layer of protection, especially on the toe, because you wear that out so much working them and kneeling all the time. So hopefully it's a good thing. We'll see when we get it cut in half. And then to the lining. So this is the exact same lining material as the mock toe ones, except it does have a counter cover and I think it's a leather counter cover and that was one of the big gripes I had with the, with the mock toe car hearts because at the heel where your heel's slipping all the time every time you walk it really wears out that fabric and next thing you know you've got a big hole in your heel and it becomes uncomfortable and so that's why in a higher quality boot you see a leather counter cover right there to add that that little bit of grip and that wear protection so I'm glad these work boots have it and it also has that storm defender waterproof membrane on the inside of the boot I'm assuming it's the same one as the mock toe and I'm curious if the, the leather itself is waterproof so let's do a quick waterproof test drizzle some water on it so as you can see the water just immediately soaked into the leather which isn't that big of a deal because you still have that membrane on the inside it's going to keep your feet and your socks dry but if you're in water for a long time all that water is going to soak into the boot and stop at the membrane but your whole boot's going to be soggy and if you've had a pair of boots like this you know what i mean it's like it's almost like the, the boots become really heavy and it gets really squishy and just kind of gross and they take forever to dry out. So I'm pretty disappointed this, this leather has zero waterproofing agents in it because it just, it kind of defeats the purpose of the membrane. And then to the construction of this boot. So this looks like it's a direct attached construction where they basically injection mold the midsole and the outsole to the upper and fuse it all together rather than a cemented construction. And usually you can tell that by the midsole layer on all of these boots, you can see it on the outside. It's that softer, lighter foam on the Keens, same with the Ariats and kind of the same with the Blundstones. It's that layer right there. So it looks like a direct attached construction, but this layer feels really hard and dense and it doesn't really feel like foam. So I'm not 100% sure. And it also has a, a pretty nice composite toe. A lot of times these safety toes are so narrow that you're, at least for me, my pinky toe and my big toe rub on it. But this one's pretty spacious and it's fairly comfortable for a safety toe boot. And then to the insole. So this is a 
cushion polyurethane insole and it's a pretty decent insole to be honest it's it's not a super cheap one it's not a super nice one but it is removable so you can always replace it when needed but it's not a bad insole and then to the outsole so this is a this is a rugged flex rubber based outsole and if we do a quick durometer test on it 85 87 so a, a pretty a pretty stiff rubber that's up near the vibram hardness but one thing i thought was funny on a lot of outsoles you'll see some writing and some lettering on the outsole here and there that say certain attributes of the of the outsole but on this boot they've gone all out they have they have a little label that says flex oil resistant light grip non-marking self-cleaning lugs slip resistant a carhartt logo on the toe established in 1889 another carhartt logo and one more carhartt logo so it's just it, it just is a very carhartt thing to do to have carhartt logos everywhere words everywhere it's uh it's kind of obnoxious it's not a big deal but it, i just thought it was funny and then to the midsole so they say it's an eva midsole which is usually what we see in all these other boots that are this more modern style work boot because you get that squish and comfort of the EVA foam and then you get the durability of the rubber on the outsole. But I'm not really sure how soft the EVA foam is because I don't know if that's the actual midsole or if it's inside. So overall, it, there is a little bit of hope for this boot. If some of these features are real features and not just gimmicky for show features, there might be some hope for Carhartt. So let's cut the scene in half. All right, we got them chopped. Let's see what's inside. So in the first Carhartt video, the, the biggest thing that irritated me and I didn't like was that Carhartt was making a boot with the appearance of a heritage style quality work boot without any of the actual substance of a quality work boot on the inside or anywhere in the boot and unfortunately i think this dedicated work boot is the exact same way it seems like it just has the appearance of a work boot without any actual substance and quality materials and construction of a, a nice work boot it just seems like they took the look of a modern work boot and said, how can we make this as cheap as humanly possible, cut as many corners as possible, hide everything on the inside, but still have it look like a work boot and increase those margins and just sell boots to people that are lovers of the Carhartt name. And I hate that because they're just sacrificing their own brand and they're using the brand loyalty to sell a terrible thing. So what do I mean by that and what are the examples? So the first thing is from the outside of the boot, like I was mentioning earlier, you would assume it's just like these areas with the, you can see the foam midsole and then the harder outsole. That's what this looks like, but this is just part of the outsole. This lighter color is made to look like you can see that EVA midsole, but in all reality, it's just more rubber and it's, it's trying to look like it. Because on the inside, you have, one, two, three, four different pieces of foam all glued together and all separated and all throughout the, the midsole layer to make up the midsole rather than the injection molded foam that you see in a better work boot. And will it really make that big of a difference in quality and durability and comfort? Maybe not, but once again, it just feels like they're trying to trick people into thinking it's this style of work boot when in all reality, they're just putting random pieces of foam in the midsole. The next issue is the rubber bumpers. 
Um, I was hoping that they were an extra layer on top of the leather and it was a dual layer at your toe and at the heel, but they're not. The leather stops as soon as that rubber bumper starts. And so you don't actually get an extra layer of protection. If anything, it's probably less durable because it's just a thin layer of rubber rather than that thicker layer of leather because the leather itself is pretty decently thick leather. 2.2, 2.3 millimeters thick. So I'd way rather just have leather over top rather than a, a cheap rubber that looks like it's adding some extra protection. And then to the inside of the boot. So this boot has the exact same problem the mock toe has with all these loose floppy layers. This work boot's maybe not quite as bad, but all these layers are still separated and floppy. And even the first like four or five layers are the exact same layers as the mock toe. And the issue with having this, the loose and floppy layers is they're not cemented together. So anytime you flex that boot, all those layers move independently. And be because of that movement and that friction, it wears the layers out prematurely because they're always rubbing against each other rather than being one solid piece all the way through. But even down to the counter cover, this counter cover is so thin, it's almost not even worth having there as an extra layer because it's only 0.5 millimeters thick. So really on the inside, it's just about as bad as the mock toe ones because it's almost identical. Um, but at least it does have a fiberglass shank, which is nice. And I think the composite toe is a nice composite toe. Now that we know that it's not uh, direct attached and it's just cemented, let's see if I can rip this apart like we did with like the Brunts and the other cheap made work boots. Oh. Ow, that hurt my hand. Okay, well it ripped part of the way, kind of like the Brunts, how it ripped up until the upper is tucked underneath. Oh, that's not. I don't know if I can get the rest off. Nope. Okay, so it ripped to some degree. So at least it is uh, cemented fairly well. Not crazy good, but okay. You know, it didn't rip quite as easy those Converse or the Brunts. Let's just see if we can get it to tear. Ooh, easy peasy. So it kind of passed. So now that we've done a couple tests, gone through the layers, what do I think of this boot? It, it honestly makes me wonder if I feel like there's, there's one or two things that's happening. Either Carhartt is just making terrible boots and trying to increase margins and trick people with the Carhartt name into to buying a, sh a really terrible boot that looks like a higher quality work boot, or it's a boot that's made for people who don't necessarily want to work in this boot, but they want to have a Carhartt looking work boot just for the style of it. I honestly don't know which one it is. I lean towards it just being Carhartt not doing the right thing by their brand and just selling a terrible product, but who knows? So I would stay away from this boot. I, don't, I, do, I do not think that the Carhartt has redeemed themselves. I think they should be just as embarrassed, if not more embarrassed about this being a dedicated work boot and being so bad as they were about this mock tail boot. So Carhartt should still be embarrassed and it's a bummer because I really like Carhartt. I, like I was raised in Carhartt with the bibs and the, the coats because I was raised in a small town on a farm. <laughs> And so to see them get to this point where they're selling clearly terrible boots, cutting all the corners and hiding stuff on the inside to make it look like a better boot than what it is, is a huge bummer, especially for a, a classic American workwear brand. They should be embarrassed. So, so let me know what you guys think. And if you've owned a pair of these, let me know what your experiences are with them. And thank you so much for all the support. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It's it's a free way to really support the channel. The subscriber number is the only number that sponsors care about. So it makes a huge difference for the channel. So thank you guys so much. And uh, let me know what else you want me to cut apart. What other boots and shoes? And I've been wanting to kind of get into more apparel and doing some more like fabric testing and material testing this year. So let me know if you guys have any ideas. And thank you guys. See ya.